Every year, there's at least one movie that opens to overwhelmingly positive reviews, only to be then met by an equally powerful wave of negative reviews. In years past, this was La La Land, Birdman, The Irishman, Nomadland, I guess pretty much anything ending in man or land, and now this year, everything, everywhere, all at once. Released in March, the hype for this movie was unreal. An original film with a stacked cast about a family caught in the multiverse made by two young, promising directors? Sign me up! I missed it while it was in theaters near me, and I wasn't able to watch it until a few weeks ago, and I really liked it. But I didn't love it. It's hard for any movie to live up to that kind of hype, but the real problem wasn't the hype. It was that I actually agreed with the negative reviews I read. Despite loving the outrageous sense of humor and the well-crafted and filmed fight choreography, the film did feel one note and monotonous in the second half, as if it ran out of new things to introduce or think about and repeated the same ideas a bit too much in the end. And some very valid problems and grievances the daughter raised felt to be resolved a little too easily. The more I dug into the movie, the more criticisms I found. I really liked the movie, I did, but I can see why others didn't, or at least were disappointed. Am I right to like a movie with so many valid criticisms? Should I lower my rating? Should I change my letterbox score? If one movie can spur thousands of different opinions, how can I be sure that my opinion is the right one, or at least valid? An answer, surprisingly enough, comes from the movie itself. Jobu Tupaki, Joy's problem, is actually very similar to mine. Joy can feel and experience every version of herself throughout the universe at once. Instead of finding this experience exciting, she quickly discovers that she has problems in every universe. No iteration of her life is ideal. There are disappointments everywhere. Her life is one small, seemingly insignificant life among millions. Her takeaway from this is that nothing matters. She dives into nihilism. It's easy to get lost in the noise. In both life and movie fandom, it's difficult to figure out what's right among the thousands of different opinions. So how do the filmmakers, the Daniels, resolve this problem? This is where Evelyn comes in. She soon experiences the chaos of the multiverse as well. She sees how vastly different her life pans out in every iteration. She even finds that a lot of her dreams come true. But she also finds something missing in each version of her life. Sure, she is famous in one world, but has no one to love. Like Joy, she sees how truly messy the multiverse is. But instead of accepting that it's all meaningless and throwing herself into the everything bagel, she comes to a different conclusion through the help of an alternate version of Waymond. He says, the multiverse having no objective meaning doesn't mean there's no meaning to be found anywhere. It just means you can inject whatever meaning you want into anything and everywhere, even a small, struggling laundromat. Similar to Joy, being bombarded by a million different takes, good and bad, about one movie can make it feel like your opinion is meaningless, or that you need to constantly change it. One could argue that everyone disagreeing about a movie's quality means no one is right and everyone is wrong. But one could equally argue that everyone is right. There are thousands of movies and even more opinions of those movies. But for me, finding meaning and joy as a film lover means committing to my experience of the film. Sure, you can acknowledge a movie has problems and you can agree with criticisms in a review, but you never have to sacrifice that experience you have with the film. Think about it, there are so many movies that disappoint us or leave us wanting more, and so when you find a movie that moves you and one you feel a kinship towards, that's something special and you should cherish it. Sure, someone might disagree or have a different experience, but that's theirs and you can always commit to your experience. And you do this through connecting to others. Jobu slash Joy eventually confesses that I wasn't looking for you so I could kill you. I was looking for someone who could see what I see, feel what I feel. Isn't that why we watch movies in the first place? To see the world through someone else's eyes? To think and feel things we've never experienced? 
watching movies and reading someone else's thoughts on a movie is the best way to feel less alone in the world. Stop seeing it as a competition and start treating it more like a conversation. Whether you agree with the final rating or not, reading and watching other views on a film can open you up to new ways of analyzing story structure, or it can teach you new filmmaking techniques, which can only enrich in your own perspective. Because the point of all this, talking about movies on the internet, isn't about being right. That's only going to lead to frustration and conflict. The point is to connect with a piece of art and to connect with others. Like Wayman said, this doesn't make you naive. In fact, cynicism and naivety are two sides of the same coin. They paint everything in one simple color. I'm not saying you cover your ears and block out all criticism, no. Instead, you face the failings and criticisms of a movie head on, learn from others' point of view, and still cling to the parts of a film that bring you joy. You will never be able to control the multiverse of opinions on the internet. We can do whatever we want. But you can control how you interact with them. Nothing matters. <laughs>